Welcome to Lesson 8E, Major Head Losses, Turbulent. In this lesson, we'll look at some empirical data, which we call the Moody chart, and an empirical correlation, the Churchill equation, for Darcy friction factor F for fully developed turbulent pipe flow. We'll do a couple example problems to illustrate how to apply this correlation. Let's talk about the Moody chart first. We're talking about major losses, which hold for fully developed sections of pipe. The major head losses are given by this equation, where Darcy friction factor F is a function of Reynolds number and pipe roughness over diameter, the non-dimensional roughness ratio. This is the definition of F and Reynolds number. We use hydraulic diameter, the pipe is not round. The Moody chart is a compilation of experiments on fully developed pipe flow. These data were generated for a wide range of Reynolds number and epsilon over D. It's a very famous plot that plots Darcy friction factor F as a function of Reynolds number for various values of relative roughness epsilon over D. These are all non-dimensional parameters. This chart shows both turbulent and laminar flow. For laminar flow, F is 64 over the Reynolds number, and that's given by this line. Notice that this is a log log plot, so 64 over Reynolds number appears as a straight line. This value is 2000. So 2300 is roughly there, and that's where laminar flow typically ends. Then we have this kind of fuzzy region, which is transitional, followed by turbulent flow. For turbulent flow, you see that F goes down as Reynolds number goes up, but at very high Reynolds numbers, these curves level off. We call that the fully rough turbulent flow region. There are various curves here based on relative roughness. This bottom curve is for smooth pipes. In other words, epsilon is zero and the curves go up as epsilon over D goes up. For example, if roughness is about one hundredth of the diameter, we would use this curve. For some Reynolds number compared to the smooth curve, that's quite a big difference in F. In the old days before computers, we had to calculate our Reynolds number and our roughness and use this chart to find the Darcy friction factor. But it's a lot easier now to just plug in an equation. There are several correlations that have been generated through the years I'm going to talk about only one, the Churchill equation, because of these three advantages. It is explicit rather than implicit. It's pretty straightforward to include in software, and it works for both laminar and turbulent flow. It even gives results for that fuzzy transitional region, although those results are not very reliable. In case you're not familiar with these terms, explicit means you have F equal some equation that you can just calculate. We see that Churchill equation is of that type. These terms are rather ugly, but it's still explicit in that if we know Reynolds number and epsilon over D, we plug in to get A and B and then get F. Implicit, like some of the older correlations, had equations like 1 over square root of F equal a bunch of stuff times the log of bunch of stuff and 1 over square root of F. And you can't solve this explicitly as F equals something. You had to iterate to get F when you knew Reynolds number and epsilon over D. So this is the Churchill equation. For a given Reynolds number and epsilon over D, you simply calculate A and B and then F. Note that A and B are dimensionless. In other words, they have dimensions of one. This is a very important equation in this course. We will use this Churchill equation for all pipe flow problems from now on. I'll do two examples. First, a simple one just to show you how to use the Moody chart and the Churchill equation. And then I'll do a more complicated problem. Here we have water at 20 degrees flowing through a long straight fully developed section of round pipe as sketched. We give pipe diameter, which I convert to meters, average roughness inside the pipe, which is epsilon, which I also convert to meters, length of the section of pipe under consideration is L, and then we give V dot in liters per minute, which I also convert to standard SI units. We also look up the properties for water at 20 degrees C, density, and viscosity. So now we're ready to plug in these values. Average speed V is V dot over A. If you're using software like MATLAB, make sure you have a different A, call this maybe AC cross-sectional area. It's not the same as this A in the Churchill equation. I'll call it AC, which is pi D squared over four. And so my speed becomes four times V dot over pi D squared, or about 0 0.646 meters per second. Now I can calculate Reynolds number, rho, V, D over mu, or 21882. And epsilon over D is also easily calculated. Here it's 0 
We want to calculate the pressure drop through this section of pipe. But first we need to find F. We know that F is a function of Reynolds number and this relative roughness. I'll do it two ways, first with the Moody chart, then with the Churchill equation. Note the values of Reynolds number and relative roughness. From the Moody chart, we have to find Reynolds number and epsilon over D and read off F. This chart can get a little confusing. This value is 10,000, 10 to the fourth. So this is 20,000, which is this tick mark. So 22,000 is about here. I draw a line straight up from there. And now I find 0 0.045, which is in between the 0 0.04 curve and the 0 0.05 curve. In fact, it's halfway in between those two. So we read off about 0 0.070 from the Moody chart. Back to our problem. Let's write F from the Moody chart as 0 0.070. We really can't get any more than two digits typically, which is OK since the Moody chart itself is only good to about plus or minus 5% at best. Now let's calculate F Churchill for comparison. I strongly urge you to use software. The Churchill equation is rather long and ugly, and you don't want to make calculator errors. At our Reynolds number and our epsilon over D, plug these into Excel or any other software you want, and make sure you get these numbers. A is huge, and B is a reasonable number. And when you plug into Churchill, you get F equals 0.06. 993, which is very close to the value we had from the Moody chart. In fact, the Churchill equation has now replaced the Moody chart. And as I said, make sure you can repeat these numbers before trying this on your own for a homework or quiz or exam problem. Now that we have F, we know that the major head loss is FL over dV squared over 2G, and therefore the pressure difference from that head loss is rho G times HL major. We're talking about a horizontal pipe, so there's no pressure drop or rise due to elevation change. There's no pumps or anything, so this is simply the pressure drop P1 minus P2 required to push the flow through. Combining these two, the G's cancel out, and this is our answer in variable form. I plug in the numbers, density, F which is non-dimensional and has no units, L, D, V, and that's squared, over 2 and some unity conversion factors to get our answer in KPA. I get 23.8 KPA to three digits. By the way, we'll still give our answers to three significant digits typically, even though there's a lot of error in the Moody chart and the Churchill equation, which just duplicates the Moody chart. It's really a curve fit, so it has the same amount of error. Now let's do a more complicated example. This is the same example as the previous lesson, but if you recall, we did that one wrong because we assumed that the flow was laminar. We found out that it was turbulent. So we've already set up this problem, water at 20 degrees C, being pumped by a small pump through this pipe, and also increasing the elevation of the water. I give all the same values as the previous lesson, except I added a roughness inside the pipe. But all else is the same. And we want to calculate the same thing, the electrical power in watts that must be delivered to the pump motor in order to pump the water under these given flow conditions. Last time we got 1.94 watts, but this was wrong because the flow is not laminar. It's actually turbulent, though just barely so. So now let's repeat using the Churchill equation instead of the laminar equation. We had from the previous lesson, the electrical power required is rho V dot G divided by the pump motor efficiency times the quantity elevation difference plus minor head losses plus major head losses. These major head losses are given by F L over D V squared over 2 G. We were given this elevation difference and the minor losses. As I said in the previous lesson, we will learn how to estimate this later, in fact, in the next lesson. We had calculated the Reynolds number last time. I give more digits here. It's 4186.54. And the roughness parameter is epsilon over D, which is 0 0.00100. Plug these into your software for the Churchill equation, and you should get F equal 0.04118. Again, try this on your own for practice. Make sure you can get that number. Before I go further, I just want to compare with the previous F, which we had assumed incorrectly was 64 over Reynolds number for laminar flow. Plugging in our Reynolds number, we get F as 0.01529. We see that this is quite different from the F for turbulent flow. Now we have everything we need for this equation, since the only thing lacking was F. So let's plug in the numbers. Rho, V dot, G, 
pump motor efficiency, elevation difference, minor head losses, and then major head loss, which is our F times L over D times V squared over 2G, close bracket, and then two unity conversion ratios, noting that a watt is a newton meter per second. Plugging all this in gives us 2.09 watts, which is now the correct answer. You may be wondering why this is not much different than the laminar case for which we had 1.94 watts, even though F is significantly different as we had pointed out previously. Well, the reason is that if you calculate these terms, which is HL major, we get about 0.521 meters. But this is added to the elevation difference and the minor losses. Here the minor losses are only about a fifth of the major losses. So the terms major and minor are true to their names here. But notice how big delta Z is compared to either of these two. So even if this were pretty far off, this term dominates. That's not always going to be the case. I'll comment that here, delta Z term dominates over HL major and HL minor, which explains why these two are pretty close. But this one was incorrect, and this is the correct final answer. So now we're able to do some fairly complicated problems. The only thing left is how to calculate irreversible head losses from inlet regions, outlet regions, elbows, and things like that. We'll talk about these minor losses in the next lesson. Thank you for watching this video. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel for more videos.